Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please take your seats at this time as the program will begin momentarily. When designing assessment for work-based learning, problem-based learning or flipped classroom approaches, it is essential to keep in mind that these are all student-centered approaches. These student-centered approaches also have consequences for the assessment. In student-centered approaches, students are facilitated in their learning process, in which timely feedback, often in a formative form, plays a vital role. Also, students typically create or produce their own work as part of their learning journey, as opposed to the studying for the test in the more traditional classroom approaches. As a result, students in these innovative approaches have a need for continuous assessment, often in a formative, qualitative format during their learning activities, to serve as feedback on their progress in attaining their learning outcomes. This type of continuous assessment, if not designed well, can be very laborious for lecturers or, if not given at all, can lead to failure in students achieving the learning outcomes. Most negative reports surrounding enough to teaching and learning approaches, such as problem-based learning, work-based learning and flipped classroom, often stem from poor execution in learning design, especially when it comes to the continuous assessment processes. If feedback as part of the continuous assessment is not given, students feel not taken seriously and lose trust in both the method of delivery and the lecturers involved. As a result, students become disengaged with the learning process and will not attain the desired learning outcomes. This is one of the reasons why the concept of free riders can occur, which is one of the main points of criticism, especially in group-based problem-based learning, work-based learning and flipped classroom approaches. Just assessing the final product or report in such approaches will lead to a lack of constructive alignment in the course, which is to be avoided at all costs. Although for certain courses, self-assessment and auto-grading tools and setting milestones may also assist lecturers or students in the giving and receiving of feedback on how they are doing during the course, they are still very limited in the levels of sufficient and relevant feedback needed by the students in their learning process. One other way to provide students with formative or even summative continuous assessment whilst at the same time not overloading the lecturer is to have students contribute to their assessment by having students assess each other. This way, students provide each other with the necessary continuous feedback during and even after the learning process. This type of assessment can work especially well in larger classes of over 50 students. This concept of students assessing each other is known as peer assessment. It is widely defined as an arrangement which individuals consider the amount, level, value, worth, quality or success of the products or outcomes of learning of peers of similar status. This definition was first coined by Keith Topping. Peer assessment has proven to be a useful strategy to lower a lecturer's burden but also as having a positive impact on student learning. Peer assessment doesn't only deepen students' understanding of the material studied, it also allows students to develop essential transversal skills such as giving and receiving feedback, forming judgment and reflection. Peer assessments inform students during their learning process and can inform the overall summative assessment of the course. Peer assessment can take many different forms. Let me attempt to create some structure in the many different peer assessment options to open to you as a lecturer. Globally, you can divide peer assessment into three different types, each with its own characteristics. The first type is peer review, which is similar to the review process carried out in the publication of scientific articles. Students review each other's output and provide each other with feedback which the receiving party can learn from and or improve their work. Outputs that are assessed can be anything from essays and reports to prototypes or computer code. The second type is peer grading, where students grade their work in a formative or summative way against a set of given criteria. Examples of these are students grading each other's homework, assignments or essays. This type of feedback doesn't necessarily require students to give detailed feedback, rather the feedback is limited to whether the answer is correct or to what extent the student has delivered what was asked based on the given criteria. The third type is peer evaluation, which means that students evaluate each other often in the context of a group process. Students reflect and give feedback on, for instance, transversal skills within this process, such as the ability to work together in teams, but also on their effort or their intellectual contributions within the context of their assignment. As you can see, there is a type of peer assessment available for almost anything. 
Choosing and implementing the right type of assessment for your problem-based learning, work-based learning or flipped classroom course will depend on your individual course, its learning outcomes, your institutional culture and regulations and the tools and resources you have available to you. As an engineer, I would say you have a plethora of design options to choose from to design the assessment that best fits your course.